Executive Officer in C Digital Company Limited. Please welcome Kun Ittaya Siri Wasugan. Next, I would like to welcome the Chief Strategic Development Officer Ananda Development Public Company Limited, Dr. John Minsler. I would like to pass over to you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, shall we? Okay, uh, we can go back one slide actually to do a quick, to introduce our guests a little bit more formally. Okay, can we go back to the uh, introduction slides? Yes, no, maybe. One more, please. Yes, it's my, my honor to introduce uh, you, Kunitaya. Uh, Kunitaya leads the digital and IT arm of INSEE Group as the Chief Executive Officer. Um, her group is a multicultural organization, I think uh, across 10 countries, Kunitaya? Five countries. Five countries. Uh, and responsible for the digital transformation of the group, which uh, is, is always an interesting challenge. Uh, formerly uh, CEO of Wholesome Services, uh, and many years of uh, international business and IT experience, plus uh, being a multiple award winner. Thank you for joining us today, Kunitaya. Thank you for inviting me. Next slide, please. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. John Miller. Uh, the doctor, as he told me this morning, is actually a medical doctor. So if, if something happens, then we know Dr. John can help us. So we, that's a very uh, nice thing to know. Um, he's the Chief Strategic Development Officer for Ananda and responsible not only for new businesses, uh, but as well as innovation strategy and investor relations. And, uh, we are quite excited to hear from him about what lessons that has for, uh, for the other industries. Uh, and prior to that, Dr. Miller was uh, founded an enterprise accelerator in Cambridge, uh, and the way he described it, it sounded like one of the early days of venture capitalism, so that was pretty fascinating, um, and uh, which led to a lot of innovation and entrepreneurship initiatives with the UK government. Thank you for joining us today, John. Awesome. So um, we, the way we have it set up is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, digital transformation and a few questions and these, uh, what both of them and their two companies are doing today, right? Uh, before that, I, I lead the digital transformation office uh, for Cisco, uh, and the reason we exist is to help our our most uh, important customers uh, get the uh, marriage between business and IT right, so to achieve their business outcomes uh, from investments in technology. Uh, that's what we exist for, and it is uh, you know one of the benefits and perks of my job is to interact with fascinating people uh, like the one we have on stage. Um, and and what, the other thing interesting about these two companies is, as one of my colleagues asked me, is you know we're going to talk about digital transformation, but you have two very very old world companies. You have a company that makes cement and another company that uses cement to put up buildings, right? Are you sure they're going to be able to talk interesting things about digital transformation? Um, I said, yeah, 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 because you know, based on the research we've done, actually both of them are doing very fascinating things. So, so maybe that's the place where we'll start, which is, Kunita, what does the term digital transformation uh, mean to your business? And tell us a little bit about that journey. Uh, we have added secure to it, uh, because we as Cisco believe, and that's the theme of this conference today, right? While digital transformation is key, doing it in a non-secure way is actually very dangerous. So Kunita, over to you. All right, thank you. Let us the audience first. Who come from the industrial? Who has the plant in Thailand? Raise your hand. Plant. Okay, this is interesting. You know, this is interesting work where every single day the technology is robust, right? And the way we did the task in the past 10 years, it will not help us for another 10 years. In INC, in Siam City Cement, we believe. No matter what industry you are, one fine day, the technology is needed in your industry. And that's why we believe that we need to move now, okay? We use technology to help the people, the human. The human that, uh, the one that we mean is the em employee, customer, our, our vendors, you know, and also the people in Thailand. Uh, the aim of us is how could we use the technologies to help the company more effective, to link the customer and all ecosystem together 
to make a smart plant. We want to build the future of the industry for Taiwan and for our next generations. And if we can do that, it means that we will become a part of Thailand 4.0. And at the end of the day, no matter what the time is, INSEE will still can produce the cement for Ananda. We can able to produce the cement for the sustainability of Thailand and, and Asia. Uh, I think this is important, but when we're talking about technologies, when you connect the things, people want to connect with you, right? But the thing is there are some people you don't want them to connect with you too. So that's why when we go for digital technologies, go for IoT, the one thing that's very important for us is the security. And it's interesting in, in Z. Innovation is very fast in here, plus on top, the IT security is very much concerned. It's not only the task of the IT, but it's also concerned to all the people in ecosystem, including our board and including all the engineer and all employee in the company. So for us, digital transformation is important. IT security also very important for us too. Great to hear that, great to hear that, Punita. John, what about you? I know you relaunched as an urban tech company recently. Tell us a little bit more about uh, digital transformation and secure digital transformation at Ananda. Okay, thank you. Um, and thank you for inviting me today. It's a great honor to be here. Um, I'd also like to start by beginning with a question for the audience, just as you did. Um, not who owns a property company, but who has even heard of Ananda? Anybody heard of Ananda? Okay, there's a few hands gone up. I guarantee four years ago, if I'd asked that question, the only hands that would have gone up would have been my staff who were sitting over here at the back here. Because four years ago, we were a tiny little company. And as of this year, based on everybody's launch plans, we are the second largest launcher of projects. Only Praxa is still bigger than us as a residential developer. So we've gone from a tiny little company to being the second largest in the industry in four years. And in fact, Ananda at the moment is in the middle of a 10x growth period in seven years. We're growing 300% over the next three years, 500% over the next five years. The whole thing is 10x growth in seven years. So this is a brick and mortar company that's growing like a technology company. And I also head investor relations for Ananda. So I speak to all the fund managers and everybody else. And they're asking me this, how does a, what is literally a brick and mortar company how are you growing like a technology company? How are you growing 10x in seven years? And we're doing it without increasing our debt to equity ratio. So we're not levering up, we're, we're keeping the same debt to equity ratio. And that's the importance of digital transformation. What has allowed us to go from nothing to the second largest property company in four years? What's allowing us to achieve 10x growth in seven years? It's the power of digital transformation. Um, so we, as we say, we launched ourselves as an urban tech company. And the reason why we did that, we relaunched this as an urban tech company, is to emphasize to the market and also internally to reinforce the culture that we're building inside Ananda, that what Ananda is, is not a property company. We're an urban living solutions company. We're a company that delivers solutions to make urban life better for our customers. It just so happens that at the moment most of this is piling up cement uh, and steel in order to create condos, but we're delivering these solutions. And as we go forward in the future, more and more of these solutions will also be digital. Uh, but also the way that we're handling this, so for example, the next three years I said we're growing 300%, but we've frozen headcount. So we have to grow every employee's productivity 300% in three years. So digital technologies, not just one or two or three, but every, literally, absolutely every aspect of the company has to be digitized to allow us to achieve that goal of 300% growth with no increase in, in headcount, 300% growth uh, in productivity. So uh, that's how it'll be. And on the secure, do, do you want me to answer secure side straight away? On the secure side, we have two aspects to the security. Uh, Isia runs a, a B2B company. We run, in effect, a B2C company. Although saying that, in anything we do, so for a typical condo, 
we have 43 companies in our supply chain. So we actually do a lot of B2B ourselves. And we're putting them all on this same uh, what we call BIM digital platform. Everything becomes uh, digitized. So we're supporting all our supply chain companies to come onto that as well. So obviously the security of that is very important when you're dealing with so many companies on a, on a single platform. Within the, the company itself, we, you may have heard, we have the, the smartest office in Asia. Uh, we opened our new corporate office last year. And I say this is the smartest office in Asia not just because we have the smartest people working there, but because we have technologies there that have never been sold in Asia before uh, from various companies. And some of the technologies, although they do sell them, um, is the communications platform. So the communications platform is built on Cisco technology. So from our point of view within the company, we completely trust, as your previous speaker said, 88% of the Fortune 100 companies trust Cisco. We're not a Fortune 100 company, but we also trust Cisco. We believe they know a lot more about security than we do. Uh, but as a company, it's an important competitive advantage that, that Cisco has, that we take security seriously. So if you have a competitor that doesn't take it as seriously, they're not a viable vendor for a company like us, because we do take security seriously. So it's an important issue. And, and it's important to us to be able to live up to that trust, so we, we appreciate that. Uh, let me pick up on the first part of, of what you answered, and, and it was truly fascinating. I mean, that sounds like a really transformational journey, right? And as you said, 10x uh, is, is not easy, right? Um, who within the company is considered the owner for that digital transformation? Is there an owner? Um, when we relaunched as an urban tech company, uh, this, as I say, I do investor relations. So the, the press and the analysts and the fund managers were going, what's your budget for innovation? And my answer to them was, we have no budget for innovation, which kind of confuses people. Because most of our competitors say they're going to spend this many billion or this percentage of profit. And I say, we have no budget for innovation. Because everything Ananda does is innovation. Everybody in the company is expected to innovate in everything they do all the time. And we built that into the culture. We build it into the KPI. We build it into the measurement system. Everything that everybody does has to be better every single time. And if you want to get rewarded, you have to show every year you have to be it's everybody. It's part of everybody's job. Um, we have to build this through the culture, we build it through the, the uh, compensation system, we build it through uh, the KPIs and the measurement systems and, and expectations uh, on everything like that. So there's no owner of innovation. But in order to create that kind of culture, you do need very strong leadership from the top. And we're fortunate, our CEO, uh, Kun Chun uh, the founder of the company, uh, very strongly committed to innovation and technology. So we, every single time we face a problem, or anybody asks a question of the, the C-suite, our answer is, how are you finding an innovative solution to that? How are you gonna innovate to solve that problem? So when you repeat this often enough, then gradually the, the staff and the employees realize, if I go to them with a new solution, they'll be happy. If I go to them with an old solution but more money, they're not going to be happy. <laughs> so it's this constant repetition from the top. So we say there's no ownership, there's no separate budget, but it does still take very strong leadership at the top. And another aspect is that employees believe what they see way more than what they hear. So if you tell them you want them to be innovative, but then they f if they fail, you punish them, or if they succeed, you don't reward them, or you reward someone else for, for using, they will very, very quickly pick that up and realize that you're not sincere. Um, and they will uh, behave in the ways that uh, they're seeing that you're rewarding and they're seeing that you're responding positively to. So it's very important, and uh, we dis discussed this before, but the senior manager uh, at the top um, lead by example and that uh, we walk the talk. So if there is any ownership, it, it's at the top, but it's important to be throughout the organization as well. Konita, is your experience similar? Would you, would you like to share a little bit? And actually, for, from your point of view, across the five countries, how does that change things for the ownership of digital transformation? Okay, this is interesting. By the conceptual, everyone must own the digital transformations. 
my reality, um, everyone look to the top management. When we're talking about top management, we start with the board of director because they must be the one to plan you, right? The, the budgets and approve that. Then the, the C level. Once the C level decide that we want to go for that, they support. Uh, and then once the executions has been sponsored by them and it live correctly, successfully, the whole communities in the, the whole employees will look apart and, and feel like, yeah, this is the one that we are looking forward to. In INC, we start from the top first. The, uh, on 2015, we start digital transformation, the biggest one in Thailand at that time, and we success in nine months with all the platform, even backbone is digital compliant. Uh, and that one lead by executive, by C-level, right? Once it already success, we cascade uh, that idea of think tank to the manager level, because that's the time the manager need to raise themselves up. Then by this year, it will be open for all employees to think about what innovations they want and the one that good will be sponsored. Their name, the, the, the owners or the person who think about that innovations will have a name record in that solutions. I think the idea should be first start and lead by the top and then cascade down. But more, more, more the rest that we need to think through is the return. The return to the owner of the, the idea. Sometimes when we're talking about the money compensations, that is one element. But how could you build pride to that person? How could you build, live forever to the owners of the idea? You know, then the people will feel like the good idea generate and it live forever. And I believe the people will love to think about good things and keep improve about it. And in INC, we wish that uh, yes, we are in the cement industry, but we want to be the most advanced cement industry in the world, okay? Th not through the size, but through how could we motivate the people, cultivate the culture, use innovation and technology to change the game we play in the market. And I, I believe if you, one of you or many of you, who has business in Thailand, start thinking about this. I believe there are so many good initiatives that has a tag as a Thailand, made by Thailand. Has been shown in a lot on, on the global stage. And that one also bring back not only the company pride, the personal pride, but also the way we live off the country together. So that's the way we, we look into this. Fascinating, fascinating. And these ideas and initiatives that are emerging, like where do you see them having the most impact? I mean, normally digital transformation impact gets divided into customer experience, employee experience, and new business models. Uh, across these three, do you see uh, for yourself any one area where you're having the most impact? Okay. Um, I, I think first of all, we, we start the digital innovation and transformation inside the company first. We believe that the company must be strong first, right? Once you already start and you, you gain the success, you cascade it out to the customer and also your vendor, your business partner. And, and that one will generate the, the strong ecosystem back to the whole societies that you do the business. And after we do that, we also cascade or share the knowledge to the other company who interest in this journey because the truth about digital transformation is you need to have a lot of lesson learned. Okay, the person who wants to start digital transformation and you believe that everything will be perfect, you rethink about it. All the journey, you will have a failure. And all the failure, you will have a lesson learned. And then it will get the knowledge. And more and more, we believe that the things that we learn in NC it can contribute to the others, and the things that you learn from your company can contribute back to us as well. 
So that's why the way we, we, we think about, about sharing, getting perspective as well. Interesting. And John, what about you? From customer experience, employee experience, new business models, where is digital transformation having the biggest impact for Ananda? Uh, for us, we actually were approaching everything evenly because we have an approach within the company that uh, everybody's goal is to go digital. So whether it's Salesforce, IR, uh, construction, everybody simultaneously is working on innovations. So as we have this 10x in seven years growth, we have this 300% growth in three years with no increase in uh, headcount. So this 300% productivity, we can't afford just to, to focus on one area. And as a company that's growing so fast, how we interact with the rest of the world is changing very fast as well. So we can't just work on the company and then later on work on our supply chain and then later on work on the, the customer. Everything is changing so fast. Everybody uh, has to work uh, simultaneously. Um, but the, the, they, they do link together. So for example, internally, we started a big emphasis on um, business intelligence. So we've now digitized everything within the company. Everything is measurable. Everything is viewable through uh, dashboards now. I mean, literally down to the level that I know what each employee has for lunch every day. Um, and I'm, I'm not joking about that either. We, we literally just do don't that. pass that information. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Um, so this kind of uh, level of digitization, uh, as I mentioned, we have within our supply chain 43 companies. We're putting everybody on the same digital uh, platform. Uh, which is allowing us to improve uh, uh, productivity. And again, an example of that, but, um, through our contractors and various technologies, digitization and things, um, in the last three years, we have taken down the average time it takes to build a 22-story building from 24 months to 12 months. Uh, purely through better technology, digitization, uh, workplace optimization. That's the power of digitization. Even half the time it takes to build a physical building. And at the same time, we doubled the initial quality rate through other technologies that, that we brought in at the same cost. Um, and then when it comes to the, the customer side, we were developing a, a lot of technologies to improve the customer experience. Because everything is now digitized, starting all the way through, you can build one thing on another and on another and on another. You've got the data from here that can be fed through to here, which then allows you to communicate better to the, the customer uh, over here. And as Idia was mentioning, this corporate culture of everybody improving all the time, this, this culture that makes like that pride, um, and I think within Ananda, there's a lot of excitement about what we're doing as well. Um, and people can see the results. And then people are, uh, we use technology as well to help cooperation and collaboration within the company. And it's one of the reasons why we invested in this new office, so that we could move there, have a single head office now, uh, have everybody working together, and invested in these technologies to improve collaboration, to improve cooperation. Uh, cooperation to improve information sharing and knowledge sharing so that things that are happening over in uh, production where they're thinking about how do we pile up cement even faster can actually impact how do we make customers love us even more. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense and, and I can see how that would build, each of those would build on each other. Uh, in this journey so far, if you had to pick one challenge which has been the biggest one or the most difficult one to overcome or, or still being overcome, what would you pick? I mean, it's absolutely uh, getting your corporate culture right, uh, getting the communication through your uh, employees. Um, it's, it's one of the things, again, as I are, Ananda has delivered a lot of innovations to the marketplace, and all these innovations are what's allowed us to become the second largest launcher uh, this year um, from a, a very small company four years ago. So. Fund managers and other analysts are somewhat skeptical and they say, well, what's to stop your competitors copying all of these things? And my answer is nothing. Nothing stops them, them copying, and I'm sure they will. Um, they'll copy everything we, we do. But what they can't copy is the corporate culture that developed all these innovations in the first place. And in particular, the senior management corporate culture that allowed all these innovations to be implemented and developed and all the innovations that didn't work as well. And then, but we kept moving on from that as well. 
Uh, so what they can't copy is this corporate culture. So the biggest challenge is building, maintaining, strengthening, and deepening a corporate culture that uh, gives you the agility to uh, seek out and deploy solutions and digitizations and innovations across the, the entire platform. And this corporate culture of cooperation and collaboration and goal-focused, et etc. et cetera. So the biggest challenge is always uh, how do you develop a corporate culture uh, for the, the benefit of the, the staff and the workers. Connie, is that the biggest challenge for your organization? Okay, I, I think for sure, uh, like Dr. John said, the corporate culture is so important. And to build the corporate culture, you cannot just build one day announce that we will do digital transformations. But you need to have a very strong leadership in order to lead and show the success and lead to. Uh, more than corporate culture is, change the way we think. You know, sometimes Asian people, I also Asian too, we believe in best practices, okay? And by the way, in digital transformation, the the best practices is no longer valid. People talking about, I will disrupt the industry. This means that I will disrupt the best practices, right? So the next challenge and the challenge that most of the digital transformations companies should have is, how could we make our people have the dream? The dream that never does exist in the industry. The dream, the dream that, ne that never write in any book. And then when you have a dream, you believe in it, you prove that it's right, you implement it. And, and, and that is to start using digital transformation to build the new business model. You, you start differentiate yourself. Because sometimes when people go to the wrong path and try to get the digital transformation just to follow the best practices, the value of digital transformation is worth only half of it. But if you start saying that, you know guys, let's do something different that no one ever think before. That investment will become more than 100% benefit back to your company and also contribute to sustainability and growth that your company will gonna have in the industry. So for us, corporate culture and the capabilities of the people to be able to think out of the box. And sometimes we love to talk in UC. Sometimes we don't know where is the box is. We don't know what is it look like already. Just think out. And then once you start that one, you cannot imagine how many ideas, a good idea, many good ideas that will happen. And by the way, the person who create those ideas is not consultant. It is your people. But we need to start now. No, I think that both of those are extremely complex and difficult challenges, but the powerful part of solving complex and difficult challenges is that they become competitive advantages. It's difficult for people to replicate. Um, <coughs> Kunita, a specific question for you. Um, <coughs> I know you're setting up the first IoT plant in this part of the world, right, uh, in your industry. Um, how does that, or what bearing does that have on security, or how important is security for that IoT plan? I mean, we hear so much about the dangers of security or lack thereof in IoT. How are you thinking about it? Okay, um, I believe this subject would be entertained by the engineer or the people who has a plant, because most of the plant you has IT and OT, right? The OT were has been guarded carefully by engineer, and when we talking in in C that less create this first smart plan in the cement industry in Thailand. Okay. The first question that engineer asks is, how about IT security? I think this is lay as the, as the key topic to discuss. And we are lucky that we have the dream. This is a dream, a dream of creating the smart plan for future generation and the current employee. Because in the future, the persons or the company who has the big plant will come to the world where you will have less resources in the market and the generation may not work with you for long. Question to industry, how could you run those, those big plant? For us, we prepare now. The smart plant need to prepare. The first thing that we do along with Cisco is 
how could we make sure the IoT that we put in the plan are secure? And that's why we use the most updated, the IT security of Cisco right now in our plant. Um, and before we start connected all the sensors in the plant using the pervasive network. And once it's already done, right now we will add more digital technologies to make the plant smart. And by the end of this year, you will see the first smart plant in the industry um, in Thailand. Excellent. Excellent. That sounds really like something to look forward to. Um, John, for what role do you see technology vendors, startups, what role do you see the ecosystem outside your traditional uh, partners uh, playing in your digital transformation? Uh, for us, they're actually one of the most fundamental parts of it. Um, the way we look at uh, corporate innovation is Ananda has 1,200 brains working for it at the HQ level, which means there are 7.3 billion brains in the world that don't work for Ananda. And even if you're a huge company like Cisco, I don't know, you have like 300,000 staff or whatever it is, but there's still the 7.3 billion brains outside of Ananda. And what we've all seen since uh, 1997 is when the dot-com boom happened, there were two effects of that. One was that for the first time there was a global communication network. So when corporate innovation really started, when Edison founded Edison Labs in New Jersey, hundred and something years ago, he had no way of knowing even what was happening in California. Even in his own country, he had no way of knowing. But now I can sit in Bangkok, and I know everything that's happening in Silicon Valley. I know everything that's happening in Tel Aviv, and I can talk to the people instantly for free. So I have access to global innovation. And the second thing that happened after 1997 is the amount of independent innovation, non-corporate innovation, either angel-funded, VC-funded, bootstrapped, government-funded, um, university-funded, just mushroomed. So the amount of innovation and the amount of solution development that's going on in the world has expanded enormously. So this old model of developing internally, um, with hire your own scientists, build your own labs, own your own patents, is basically obsolete um, in the uh, corporation. So this ecosystem of people who are developing solutions that's the most important part. That's where we're going to get our solutions from. So for us, innovation, our competitive advantage, isn't what scientists have we hired, or even, you know, are we going to buy some startup, but how agile are we at finding solutions and deploying them across our platform to improve production, customer experience, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So startups and the ecosystem, that for us, if you like, that's, that is our R&D lab. It's one leg uh, out of the, the entire innovation structure. It's the, the foundation of it. So absolutely critically important. And at Ananda, <coughs> we built systems within the company that allow us to work with startups at an earlier stage than is normal in corporations our size. So we call ourselves an early adopter corporation. And we, we set up structures and pipelines and way of managing it. Uh, specifically so that we can get earlier access to startups and what startups are doing and interact with them earlier and on a wider scale because we view that as so important. Kurita is a larger company. Um, what is your approach or what, what role do you see technology vendors uh, and maybe startups playing for your digital transformation? Okay, um, I believe in something. I believe in the middle. I believe that some initiative can do inside corporate. There are quite a number of the initiative that if you do by your corporate, it take years. Then getting startup to work in your idea is the best, the best solution for all. Because startup, uh, they have a different culture. They can try and error. They can do everything in a very fast manner. So that's why, for me, the strategies of the company on the you know, digital transformation and innovation must be clear. What are the criteria of the, the idea that you may funding and create internal, and it fit to your corporate culture? Are there any things that totally not fit? Don't try, because it may damage at the end. If it not fit, you know that it's not fit. Let them free. Get the startup 
that match to you and then just engage them. For us, for, for our INSEE digital transformation and innovations, we have a combination. Some of it are the internal uh, projects. Some of it, we engage the startup. And, and you can ima cannot imagine that how good it is because you build and you have you have the people in house and you also have the people outside to help you. But more important is when you get the solution from startup, how do you link it back and make it sustain and make sure when you link it back, you not damage the startup culture. You know, so that that one is the beauty. And I, I believe that if you can find the solutions, how to fit both of them to create the same objective, you will become a very powerful and success in digital transformations. And I, I really like your point about matching of corporate cultures because uh, as a large technology vendor, we also see that. I think we see the organizations where our culture and our approach to innovation matches the customer's culture and approach to innovation. That's where we have the best partnerships. Great. Um, given the time, one last question for both of you. Um, maybe starting with you, Kunida. Uh, uh, what, uh, if you wanted to share a lesson or two with with the group here about digital transformation, what would it be? Okay. I suggest don't spend so long time for planning because even though you have a time like a years, two years to do planning, when you start execute some of your planning will fail. The digital transformation is about have an idea, have a proper planning, start quick, try, learn, fail and learn and move on. And if you have these agilities of doing things, thinking about it and learn about it, you will success at the end. So that, that, that is the things that we have learned so far until now. Good lesson, John. Uh, actually, the same things that um, <clears throat> um, the the two parts. One is the managing failure, because what we say in an innovation culture, um, it's more important how you manage failure than how you manage success. Because managing success is relatively easy, but it's how you manage failure so that it doesn't stop future innovation. We have, have a number of techniques on that. But um, if I can give uh, an actual example of some things. There's this, we call it rapid prototyping, rapid iteration. And as I said, I head up investor relations. So I know we're gonna triple in size in the next three years, which is gonna put our market cap over a billion dollars. I'm not officially guiding, I'm just saying that might happen. Um, so when it does, we will be uh, within the investment criteria of a lot of the huge global funds. So I know that when they start investing in companies, they send out very detailed requests for information. So the load on our IR department is going to increase enormously over the next three years, probably more than 300%. So I have a number of options. I can either staff up to, to handle this work, or I can find another solution. So what I said to the staff was, most of the questions we're going to be asked are going to be the same questions over and over again, probably 90% of them. So this is perfect for chatbot, for AI, absolutely perfect for it. So go get me a chatbot. So they went out and they came back with a proposal and they said, okay, we're gonna do the specification design, we're gonna do the, the user requirements, we're gonna go talk to, to vendors, we're gonna get bids in, then we're gonna do the development and the testing and the deployment, it'll be nine months and millions of baht. And I said, no, I want a working chatbot in 30 days. Don't come back until you've got me a working chatbot in 30 days. And initially they were like, oh, oh, Dr. John's gone crazy. How can he ask for that? But they actually came back 10 days later. And they came back 10 days later, not with a proposal for a chatbot, but with a working chatbot. And so we had a working chatbot for free at 10 days. Then 30 days later, we're on version two. And you know, chatbots are learning things, right? So by the time nine months comes around, we'll be on probably version 11 or 12. It'll be way more advanced than the actual thing. And we'd have had all our little failures along the way and then being able to adjust and iterate, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one example, even within a larger organization, there's rapid prototyping, rapid iteration, um, and we have, like Nike, just do it. Just do it, just do something. Just make something happen. Don't sit around and plan. Um, otherwise it's too late, it's too slow. 
and you'll find out it fail fast. You know, find out that's not going to work, but just do it. Just do something. So that that's one of the things that allows us to uh, innovate and adopt so fast. Perfect, perfect. Now, thank you very much. Thank you, both of you. It's been a very fascinating conversation. Uh, and dare I say an inspiring one. I think your points about culture change, about having a vision and just doing it, all, all very fascinating. Uh, thank you for your partnership and your faith in, in, in our security. We appreciate that and we hope to live up to that. Um, so th that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. I do have one request. My, my daughter said that if you don't get a selfie from the same stage this time, we're not going to believe you were on stage. So before I wrap up, I'm going to request the both of you. Maybe we can take a selfie with that part of the audience uh, and then we, we, we get off the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So actually, I got one question from our audience. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you want to ask both of you for uh, our guests? Uh, this question is, in business, there are always treat IT and OT as different. And also when IT comes to IoT, it creates a number of conflict to manage IoT, right? So how do you handle this issue? Okay, interesting. In, in the old world, or maybe in the present world, OT managed by engineer in the plant, am I right? IT managed by IT department corporate. First thing that you need to do is, you introduce the word to the engineer, the friends in the plant, engineer. I don't know if have you tried or not, but for us, the, we, we already updated. Uh, the friends, the engineer friends in the plant that, by the way, the world is so changed. Automation is the norm. And by the way, robot is the norm too. It will be commodity very soon. The question is, and we don't want to see the engineers have a hard work in the night, cannot sleep because they worry about plant will break down. What if? You can able to access your plan, your productions. You can able to see in your plan in the area that you concern, anywhere, anytime. Or else, if you have the problem in the plan, you can able to connect life on that spot to the expert outside Thailand, where in the past you need to fly them into Thailand and so forth. You know, there are so many business cases that the people who handle the OT never have a look, never know it before. And you are the person who know the change in the world. If you start introduce this kind of the benefit back to the engineer, trust me, they will be the most capable people who join sponsor with you. We did that. And by the way, not only the IoT that we start in the plant, for the engineer, they start robotic. And suddenly they raise their hand and said, can I fly the drone? So, okay, why you want to fly the drone? I want to see the concession because we have money in, in the plant. And we want to see the, the overall of the machine on the top that normally people need to climb up and not save. And by the way, we have a huge pie of the inventory and we don't want the people to just go there and measure. We want to have a drone to measure it. Welcome to the world where the OT people actually more advanced and more better in terms of applied technology, but they don't have a chance to know what's going on outside. My recommend is bring the world to them or get them go outside the plant, see the world. And if you success doing that, you will have a strong partner who raised the hand and said, let's do it. In NC, we not convince the plan to do IoT. We're just talking about the IoT is come, the smart plan is come, the robot will be known. And suddenly the hand raised and said, let's start it. Let's do it now. I, I, I think it's not the challenge, just twist, give the right information and I believe you're going to have a strong partner of ITOT and that one will be sustained in your company. Um, 
I actually, I don't understand the question. And the reason I don't understand the question is that I think because we don't differentiate between these different things anyway. Um, where we do similar kind of things like you is the, the production of buildings. Yeah. And we have our engineers who, who've done things before, we're introducing full BIM modeling now. So we're digitizing everything to do with design and construction and workplace tracking and construction site monitoring and everything like this. But we don't differentiate whether the solution is IT, IoT, improvements in um, workplace management and things like this, we don't differentiate. Everybody is expected to contribute towards the, the solution. Now we understand, because we're bringing in new technologies, uh, that this is a challenge for people who are initially educated, trained, experienced in doing things in a different way, but it's a challenge for everybody at the same time. So for us it's a uh, training, education, uh, collaboration issue and we're, uh, we recognize that challenge and we invest heavily in it and we actually manage our supply chain in a slightly different way that we know we're asking our supply chain to make a commitment to uh, adopt these new technologies including IoT or whatever it is that we're bringing in that we think is a solution to optimize so we work with them in a collaborative basis as well so it's worthwhile you investing alongside of us to upgrade your staff and upgrade your systems and everything else because as the largest condo developer, here's this pipeline of work that's going to come. Um, so there's, there's no, we recognize there's a challenge, but we don't differentiate between the different things. Excellent. There's a challenge in every upgrade of technology. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you very much again. Okay. Uh,